In this lesson, we are going to learn how to find the slope intercept, which is y equals to mx plus c, but your teacher might use a different letter here, like a b, but it's the same thing. And we're going to learn how to find the equation of that line when we are given a perpendicular line. So in the previous lesson, we spoke about what to do if it's a parallel line. Now we're going to speak about a perpendicular line. So first of all, what are perpendicular lines? Perpendicular lines are lines that intersect each other at 90 degrees. So let's write that down quickly. Perpendicular lines intersect each other at 90 degrees. So there is so so in the previous lesson when we spoke about parallel uh, we said that parallel lines look like this, and so they have the same slope. Perpendicular lines do not have the same slope. Here's line number one, here's line number two. Clearly, we can see that they do not have the same slope. So Kevin, how do we do this then? Well, that's what I'm going to explain to you now, and then we're going to do some examples. There is a mathematical rule that you can remember, and it goes like this. If two lines are perpendicular, then you can use this formula. m1, so that means the slope of the first line, multiplied by the slope of the second line, should always equal minus 1. This is a mathematical formula that you are allowed to use when two lines are perpendicular. If the two lines are parallel, then what we learned in the previous lesson was that their gradients will be equal to each other. And then for perpendicular, what we've just learned is that you can use this formula. Okay. So let's see how it actually works in practice. So here they want us to determine the slope intercept equation of a line. So straight away, I'm going to write out the generalized formula, which is like that. Now, they told us that it's perpendicular to this line over here. So what I can do, we can maybe, let, let's call this line number one. And let's say that we are trying to find line number two. We don't know what line number two is. So what we can do is we can realize that the slope of this line is one. So we can say that the slope of line number one is one. Then because the two lines are perpendicular, we can use our formula that we've just learned about that goes like this. It's always equal to negative 1. It's like a magic number. So then what I can do is I can go full in m1 as 1. And then what I can do is I can get the gradient of or the slope of m2 by just saying minus 1 divided by 1 because that's a 1 over there. And if I had to go work out the gradient of line number 2, it would be negative 1. So now I can go full in my slope as negative 1, and then I wonder who can remember, how do we find the value of c? Well, now it's easy. You just take this as the x value, and you plug it into there, and you take this as the y value, and you plug it into there. Well done to any of you who are having some nice breakthroughs right now um, and realizing that this stuff is actually not that difficult. It's very repetitive over time, and that's really awesome. And so now we can say minus 2 is equal to, whoops, that's a negative 1, times by 4. And we've got some more examples coming up in the next slides. So here we're going to have minus 2 is equal to minus 4 plus c. And so if you had to get c by itself, it would be negative 2 plus 4. And so c would be equal to 2. And so our final answer then would be y equals to negative 1x plus 2. Now we're going to do some more examples. So here's our next one. Now they say that it is perpendicular. So we need to find the slope intercept form. Sorry, let's first write that down. Of a line that is perpendicular. So we know when two lines are perpendicular, then we can use this formula. Now let's say that this is line number one. And then let's say the one that we are trying to find is line number two. So what I do is I take the slope of this line. What is the slope? Well, the slope is going to be 1 over 3. And so I just say 1 over 3 multiplied by m2 equals to negative 1. 
then to get m2 by itself, I can say negative 1 divided by 1 over 3. And if I do that, I should find out that the slope of m2 is negative. So then I can take that value and plug it in over here now as negative 3x plus c. Then to find c, I can just plug this into the x value and plug this into the y value. And then suddenly we have 0 equals to minus 3 times 1 plus c. c would be equal to positive 3 when you take that all over. And so the final answer for this one would be y equals to negative 3x plus 3. The next example is really good. You'll see why now. It is because this line is not written in the normal straight line slope intercept form. So they tell us determine the slope intercept equation, so let's go write that out, of the line that is perpendicular. So once again when two lines are perpendicular if you multiply their two gradients together you get negative one. This is just a formula you got to memorize. So now, some students are going to say, oh, Kevin, look, the slope, it's minus 6 because it's in front of the x, so that's the slope, right? But that is wrong. Remember, you can only say that this is the slope when the y is completely by itself. So we first need to get this y completely by itself. So let's quickly write this down. So you can do this in different ways, but I'm going to take the 6x which now becomes positive on the other side, and the 12, which is now negative on the other side. Then I'm going to divide everything by 3, and so I end up with y equals to 2x take away 4. Now we can say that this over here is line number 1, and the one that we are trying to find is line number 2. I can now get the slope of this line, because the y is completely by itself, so there's the slope. So we can say then that the slope of line number 1 is 2. Then I can use this formula over here, which is m1, I'm just writing it again for us, like that, and I can say 2 times the slope of line number 2 is minus 1, then slope of number 2 would be equal to minus 1 divided by 2, because I have to divide by 2 on this side, and so the slope of line number 2 is negative a half, and so I can plug that into there. So then what we'd have is y equals to negative a half x plus c, and so then to find c, I'm just going to take this as point, um, so that's the x value that I can plug in, and this over here is the y value, so we can end up with 5 equals to negative a half times 3 plus c, and so 5 is equal to negative 3 over 2 plus c. And so if you had to go work this out, you'd see that c is equal to 13 over 2. And so then I can write my final answer as y equals to negative a half x plus 13 over 2.